Hey, I'm Sarah, this is Abby, and welcome to A Swole Unlimited. If you're new here, I'm a scuba instructor and I moved into my van in 2021 after losing my dive shop in Indonesia due to shutdowns. I've been on the road diving around the US, Canada, and Mexico for the last two years, teaching on YouTube along the way. All right, let's get into the video. Just a quick little plug for my diving expeditions. I have a trip going to Los Cabos in December 2023, Socorro in January 2024, and Komodo in June 2024. You can see all the details for those trips on my website, asoulunlimited.com. Let's go! Divers should know a couple of basic search patterns for those inevitable moments when you drop something during a dive or from the boat. One of my favorite search and recovery moments was early on in my diving career and I happened to drop my torch from the boat in Thailand. It was a little bit deeper than I expected. I went down to 30 meters and started doing an expanding square. Because there was no current and really great visibility, I was able to find it within like two minutes and come back up to the surface. It was one of those moments when I felt really confident in the things that I was learning during my dive master course. And with each new environment, strong current, low visibility, I continue to learn new techniques. So I just wanna share this information with you. If you're unfamiliar with using a compass underwater, then make sure to check out my video on compass navigation for beginners. That video is linked in the description below and it will help you to understand what I'm talking about here. I'll be using the same beginner compass techniques that I described in that video, but applying them to these search patterns. As with all compass skills, make sure to pay attention to these details. Orientation of the compass. It must be kept flat in order to read accurately. You don't have to hold, but you'll want to do a tactile null so that he knows when to stop and turn. Okay, 90 degrees. Let me get my nozzle. Right there. All right. Our right, trajectory is 330. 330. All right, I'm set. Your buoyancy. You're likely to accidentally float up toward the surface when you start working with your compass, so pay attention to your surroundings as well as the pressure changes in your ears. Buddy contact. Work together. You have a buddy for a reason, so while one person is managing the compass, the other should be counting kick cycles. That way, both of you can keep your eyes peeled for the item in question without either of you being overloaded with tasks. Watch out for lines. Take cutting devices with you. You should be able to reach a cutting device with either hand. Finally, a note about searching for items. If you drop something from the surface, take references from where you lost the item according to unmoving places on the shoreline or near the dive site. Make note of the compass headings of at least two things so that you have a more accurate starting point for your search. For example, you could choose a specific tree on the shore and a rock outcropping out by the dive site. And it's really helpful to write down those reference points on a slate. If you lose something during a dive, try to remember where you last had it. And if you're familiar with the dive site, you can go directly to that area and start the search, assuming you have enough air and bottom time to do it during the current dive. If you're unfamiliar with the dive site, it may help to surface and take a reference of where you noticed that it was gone. Then you can narrow down the search area from where you started to that ending point. And you may need to go back back several times to this area to search everything. And hopefully you get lucky and find the item. You guys ready? I reached out to my Monterey followers on Instagram to see if anyone would like to help with this video. And luckily I got a solid group of great divers to play around for the day. I see the ball guy. So what so, should I say? Where are we going today and why? So the perfect spot right now is actually number seven. And then when we drop down, number seven, we head north or northwest. 
and hopefully we can find my GoPro that I lost two days ago. Awesome. Do we we have a purpose going down and showing we have a purpose. <laughs> going down and showing these search patterns. We're actually gonna go try and find a GoPro. <laughs> I love it, you know? We gotta gotta work together. Yes, amen. <laughs> The expanding square is a nice option when searching for small items with calm conditions and decent visibility. The square is made up of all right turns or all left turns, making each side longer than the last. Okay, so let's see. I'm just gonna be hovering. Right. And you right. guys communicate, you know, how many kick cycles you wanna do. With your buddy, decide on your beginning direction and set your reference turning the bezel until north is in between the index marks. Choose your starting kick cycle number. Start small, like two to four, depending on visibility and size of the object. And decide on the expansion number for each new side of the square. Again, you'll typically want it to be a small number here, between two to four kick cycles. For this example, let's say you started with two kick cycles and wanted to expand the square with two kick cycles every turn. Once you finish your kick cycles in the first direction, turn your body 90 degrees until either east or west is in between the index marks on your compass. This, of course, depends on which direction you've decided to turn the entire search pattern. Then, you'll continue in this direction for four kick cycles. Once you complete that side, turn your body until south is in between the index marks and follow that direction for six kick cycles and on and on and on until you find the item or you reach a predetermined time limit for your search. The U pattern is helpful when searching for larger items with decent visibility. It can also be used in a current. There are different ways of setting yourself up for this search pattern, so I will just share the way that I prefer teaching it. This search pattern has more turns and numbers to deal with, so make sure you communicate clearly with your buddy before starting. This pattern includes a long side and a short side, creating a U that moves in the direction of your reference point. For this example, let's say you want the long side to have 10 kick cycles and the short side to have two kick cycles. Determine the direction where your item should be, face that direction and set your reference, turning the bezel until north is in between the index marks. Then turn your body to the right until east is in between the index marks and complete half of your kick cycles for the long side. In this example, that would be five kick cycles. Once you complete those first five kick cycles, turn your body to the left until north is in between the index marks. Do your short side, which in this example is two kick cycles. Then turn your body to the left until west is in between the index marks. Now you complete the first full long side of the U pattern, which would be 10 kick cycles. After that, turn right, complete the short side, follow it with another right turn, and you're ready for the next long side. Follow this pattern of left, left, right, right, until you find the object or hit your predetermined time limit for the search. I teach the U pattern in this way so that you always have a reference for the direction you wanna go. And when you start the search by doing half of the desired kick cycles for the long side, you're setting yourself up to search directly in the pathway you've determined that the item should be located.
The expanding circle is a great option when searching for small items with poor visibility. However, you will need an unobstructed search area in order for this to work effectively because you are using a reel to complete the pattern. This search pattern is all about the tactile communication. One buddy will be the anchor and reference point, holding the line in one place. The other buddy will be the search party, swimming with the reel in hand. Before the search, discuss how you want to signal with your buddy via poles on the line. The anchor buddy will decide on a starting reference point, either a physical marker like a rock nearby or a compass heading, and every time the line from the swimming buddy reaches that part of the circle, the anchor buddy will communicate that it's time to expand the circle. For example, the anchor could tug once to let the swimmer know they've completed a full circle. With each completed circle, the swimmer will expand a predetermined length of line to expand the circle. The worse the visibility, the shorter the circle expansion should be. Note about using the line in this search pattern. Watch out for entanglement. The jack stay is a great option when searching for larger items with poor visibility and an unobstructed bottom. This is another search pattern where clear buddy communication is the key for success. You'll determine the length of your search line using a reel and the direction of the search, setting a reference with your compass. Each buddy will take an end of the line, securing it gently to the bottom. Once the line is secure, each buddy will swim towards the center and continue swimming to the ends. Once you're there, you pick up the line and you move the line in the direction of your reference, a predetermined length. So that could be a few arm spans. I prefer going with arm spans instead of kick cycles because there's such a huge variation between divers and length of kick cycles. Obviously there's a, a difference between arm spans, but you can determine that difference before starting the dive so that you're measuring the right amount. Each buddy places the line back on the ground and you repeat that process, searching for the item along the line. This process is repeated until you find the object or your search time has been reached. Although the line is mostly static in this exercise, you still want to be aware of entanglement issues. Have your cutting device available. There's another option for the jack stay and it's more of a diagonal search. I like this one because you keep your buddy team together. So this could be really helpful if you're dealing with super, super low viz situations. So the way that work is you place the line, your buddy team starts together at one end, and you swim the search line. So you'd start over here together and swim the search line across. Once you get to this spot, the buddy team moves that end up, and then you swim. Okay, so it's this little diagonal to the other side. And then once you reach that side, you move that up and swim across. This will be a slower search just because you are working together and you're not moving as far with each line movement, but it's more thorough. So that's it. These are a couple of simple search patterns to help you find objects underwater and are worth understanding and practicing so you don't end up losing your GoPro or a torch on a dive. I would personally love to hear your favorite search and recovery moments in the comments below. What search patterns do you prefer? And as always, a like, a subscribe, and a share of this video really go a long way towards supporting what I do here. There's also Patreon if you'd like to become a member of the Soul Scuba community. That's it. I'm getting out of this van. It's way too hot in here. Okay, love you. Bye.